Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Dreifurst and I'm a graduate student at the University of Texas at Austin, supervised by Professor Robert Peek. My research interests lie at the intersection of machine learning, signal processing, and wireless communications. Today, I'll be presenting our work for ICAST 2021 on optimizing coverage and capacity in cellular networks. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I said, this work is on optimizing coverage and capacity in cellular networks using machine learning. This work was co-authored with the team from Facebook, Sam, Yuchen, Paul, Max, Sanjay, Anoop, Ali, and Vish, as well as Professor He. Now today, I'm gonna to be introducing the concept of CCO or coverage and capacity optimization, and also why an automated CCO is so important. Then we'll be talking about how we formulated the problem, what the data looks like, and then we'll look at two algorithms Bayesian optimization and DDPG, which is a deep reinforcement learning algorithm, and compare the two as far as their sample efficiency and Pareto frontiers. Afterward, we'll wrap up with a quick conclusion and some of the future work that we're looking at. So first of all, CCO, or coverage and capacity optimization, is traditionally a rule-based and hand-tuned system where network operators will drive around and record measurements and then use this to decide some default values to set the network to. Then a human will be watching over and it will traditionally watch the uh, base station's uh, key performance indicators or really just some metrics that they're most interested in for any kind of significant drop in performance. If that happens, the human operator will step in and, and adjust the network as they best they see fit. Um, but we can, you can clearly see that this is not uh, a very efficient or very uh, flexible system because the human cannot keep track of all of the different parameters that might be going into this. And a lot of times uh, it's just becoming too difficult for a, a single network operator to handle. So as we were talking about denser and denser networks here, this is just becoming infeasible and we really are leaning heavily towards automated coverage and capacity optimization. Now there've been a couple of algorithms that have been proposed for this. For example, there's a machine learning based self-organizing network so this actually relied on static cell boundaries, which uh, as you can see in our diagram here, when some of the, when the beams shift from green to red, the boundary between the two should also shift from the dotted green line to the dotted red line. And this is basically uh, because as the, as the beams shift, the coverage area changes. And so the cell boundaries need to also shift as well. Additionally, there's been a lot of reinforcement learning that has tried to take advantage and be used here. For example, fuzzy reinforcement learning was used, but this actually used independently optimized agents, which doesn't allow other agents to know what the what is being changed. And so their configuration is not uh, able to accommodate these changes as easily. Then there's been some multi-cell and mean field theory that have been applied, but they relied on things like simplified channels where there are things like multi-path and reflections aren't really included or it required a, a very long exploration and search. So in this case, the multi-cell reinforcement learning search actually wanted to test out all of the different configurations. Now, naturally a network operator can't really do that for a couple of reasons. One is it would take too long. And, and two is there's a lot of big configurations that are never going to be, to be good and they're actually gonna result in very poor performance. So an operator doesn't want to sacrifice that kind of time just to see if there might be some optimization. So this really opens the way for our algorithm to come in, which is gonna show how we can trade off between some of the different choices and also how we can optimize along the way in a multi-objective form. So if you do wanna check out some of those references, here they are. And other than that, we're gonna get started with our work and especially identifying what our network simulation looks like, how we're gonna evaluate our network and how we're gonna formulate the problem. So first of all, our network is defined by five base stations, each with three sectors. So for a total of 15 different cells that we're gonna be trying to optimize. Now this optimization is gonna be over the down tilts and transmit powers, where the down tilts are from a discrete set and the transmit powers that can be anywhere between 30 and 50 dBm. Now we want this simulation to be very realistic. So we're gonna be using the urban macro cell model as well as an urban macro cell antenna radiation pattern. And the idea here is that we really just want to have a very applicable and, and realistic data set. So now we wanna look at network metrics that are also reasonable and realistic, especially for a network. And so one of the most commonly reported metrics is RSRP, which is the received power averaged over the reference signals. 
And this is usually done at a uh, per time unit instance. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to reformulate it to be on a 2D grid. So we're going to use a 2D grid world where we don't have time dependence. And we're actually just going to look at per position, what are the, the RSRP values. And we're going to look at the serving cell RSRP, which is just the power from the one serving cell versus the interference power, which is going to be the sum of all the interfering cells. Now, this naturally formulates itself well towards two metrics, under and over coverage, where under coverage is whenever the serving cell power is below a threshold, and over coverage is whenever the interference is stronger or strongly close to the serving cell power. Now, in this case, some traditional values for this are minus 110 dBm and 6 dB. Although these can vary a little bit depending on your receiver sensitivity and your network densification. So now we want to look at how we're formulating this problem. And in particular, you can see here that we've set up our we've set up our maps here, and we've showed two maps here. One on the left is using uh, the lowest possible transmit power, and the one on the right is using the maximum transmit power for just one set of downfields. Now the the dark area is going to be the areas that are undercovered. The areas in gray are going to be like your well covered regions, and the areas in white are going to be over covered or too high of interference. Now, the problem here is that this is really almost like a zero one loss, right? It's either it's the region is good or the region is not good. And that's not does not learn, lend itself well for gradient based learning. So, what we're going to do is we're going to smooth it out by actually applying the sigmoid function here, where the sigmoid function is chosen because it's often been used for this, but it's simple to evaluate. It's smooth, it's differentiable, and it saturates. So we're going to be using this as a way to learn over the entire region, not just over bad regions. And the end goal is really going to be this multi-objective optimization, where we want to minimize some scaled version of the overcoverage and the undercoverage. Now, we're not going to specify what A and B are yet, because in our Bayesian optimization, we actually don't need to. And only for DDPG do we need to pro provide these as a convex combination in order to explore the Pareto frontier. So we also need to talk about the data, because as you can quickly see, this is going to be a, a huge and expensive simulation campaign if we wanted to, to consider anything like that. However, what we're actually going to do, instead of simulating every possible combination, is we're just going to record the data for each cell independently, run it for each of the different down tilts, and create uh, a single database storing our different power maps for each different cell within each base station. And then what we're able to do is we can just scale, we can draw out the specific maps we want, we can scale them by the transmit power we, we also want, and then the end result is we have a, uh, a single power map that is specific to our situation here. So now we're going to talk about the algorithms. And in particular, we're looking at Bayesian optimization and DDPG, where DDPG is actually based on the actor critic network. And Bayesian optimization is really just relying on classical Bayes theory. And we'll want to identify really the Pareto frontier here, which is going to be really interesting because it allows a network operator to look at what the trade off is between optimizing for a little bit less under coverage or a little bit less over coverage and what, the, what they're going to be sacrificing. So Bayesian optimization is actually just a process of attempting to fit a Gaussian process to, uh, to the data that you're sampling, along with a little bit of a, a fancier way of deciding what to sample next. So it uses this acquisition function to define what the next place to sample is going to be. And then when you run this, you can actually end up with um, this nice uh, curve where you can see as each iteration goes on, it tends towards getting this nice Pareto, Pareto frontier here, which defines the best performance and the trade-off as it's going along the way. Now, again, recall that we have not uh, specified uh, any kind of convex combination here. It's actually going to learn this, this uh, combination naturally. So now when we take a look at deep reinforcement learning, we can actually see here that the DDPG, or Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient, is based on this actor critic, where the actor proposes an action based on the state, and then the critic will try to predict whether it's, what the benefit is going to be to that action. Now, there are a few more steps that go into it. For example, um, there's a replay buffer that's used to improve the data distribution so that it looks more like the IID assumption that we oftentimes make. But uh, the basic idea is, is these two networks working together. And then there's this convex combination that we're going to define so we can explore the Pareto frontier. So in this case, we're going to change lambda between 0 and 1 and see how the different results go. But before we get to the results, we're actually going to first look at 
the sample efficiency. So here's the sample efficiency comparison. Now on the left, we're actually showing the objective value throughout the training. And on the right, we're only going to show the Bayesian optimization the best value. But a lot of that is because if you look at the scale difference of the iterations, it's significant. So Bayesian optimization only needs about 100 to a few hundred iterations to achieve its final value or its final outputs. Whereas DDPG actually needs close to 30,000 iterations before it's actually fully been trained. And you can also see that in DDPG, there's significant poor exploration where we get very, very bad results. And these are the things that network operators really want to avoid. And there's also long periods with no improvement. So many, many configurations are, are just resulting in uh, a wasted sample effectively. So what, what we're kind of getting out of this is that Bayesian optimization is quite a bit more sample efficient. But DDPG seems to possibly be leveling out at a better performance metric. And so now we can take a look at those Pareto frontiers and see how that difference translates. So in the middle here is a graph of the Pareto frontiers comparing random search, Bayesian optimization, and DDPG. Now, DDPG is shown in these red circles. And you can see that, on average, it's about 1% better than the green triangles that are next to it for any configuration or any setup. But what we also need to remember, though, is, is that Bayesian optimization has seen 300 times less data at this point. So it's very interesting that this trade-off is quite, quite so high um, in terms of data versus the, uh, the overall performance. And now on the left here, I've, I've shown at the end of the training what the output uh, down tilts and powers are and highlighted some of the ones that have very big differences, either in the down tilt being more than a couple of degrees or the transmit powers being more than 9 dB. And you can see that it's quite interesting because DDPG tends to run to the limits of each thing. So the down tilts tend to be either 10 degrees or 0 degrees, and the transmit powers are oftentimes the minimum or the maximum. And this is pretty interesting, but it seems like DDPG is really focusing in on trying to minimize that overcoverage, especially by having such high down tilts. Recall that will keep the power close in and not allow too much spreading. Whereas Bayesian optimization seems to be having quite a bit or allowing quite a bit more over coverage, but minimizing the weak coverage. So it's spreading the power out to ensure that everything gets power. And on the right here, I've also shown the end metrics for this point that they've sampled. And you can see again that that's about what we expected based on the tables. The DDPG is showing that there's much less over coverage, but a little bit more weak coverage. So at this point, we've gone over our algorithms. We can kind of see the, the benefits and the trade-offs that we're making for the different algorithms, as well as for each point in our Pareto frontier. So I just want to conclude with then some key points and possible future work that we're looking at. So the most important kind of concepts here are that we've, we've said that automated CCO is important, right? Because now networks are becoming so dense that a single human cannot be managing it. And even a group of people can't understand the, the far-reaching consequences that making a change has on the network. And then formulating this problem as a multi-objective optimization allows for a lot of insight for the network operator, especially so that they can decide how much trade-off increasing or decreasing one of the metrics is and how it affects the other one. And finally, we saw that Bayesian optimization provides over 100 times more sample efficiency, but reinforcement learning did achieve slightly better uh, final values. And so we can see here that there's also a trade-off to be made between the algorithms as well. Now, looking forward, there are two main lines of work we see. Network scaling is one of the big ones, because in our instance, remember, we've only used 15 cells. But how this changes when you move to 100 or 1,000 cells uh, because it becomes quite a bit more challenging, especially for trying to get algorithms that will run across that region. Additionally, risk-averse optimization is a very interesting concept especially for an online network operator, because this will allow them to um, optimize as they're going, but not have not risk the potential for exceptionally bad configurations to come up. Now, there's been a number of research in both Bayesian optimization and deep reinforcement learning for both for this risk averse optimization. And this is really an area that we see as a, a huge gain for this field. So with that, uh, I just want to say thank you all. And feel free to contact me offline, either at my email or through my website. Additionally, here's a link to uh, our, the paper on archive. And also, we've open sourced our data platform. So feel free to uh, check that out and let me know if you have any questions. So once again, thank you.